G'day, my name's Chris, welcome back to my shed. Welcome to Flat Tag Journey for another week. Time to keep unpacking the stuff from the rally project. I'm a little bit in front of the videos, just to give myself a bit of sanity and a bit of breathing room when I'm making these things. But you see my reaction to what I'm unloading in real time. I know a bit more about the bike now than I did then, but you're seeing real life as you're unpacking it and going through things. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, uh, hit the like button or comment or subscribe. Thanks to the people who commented last week and told me what some things were, which was really cool. Enjoy. Tub number two. Uh, this is from the dealer and he included it in the sale that I just got. So you can sort of see what I got in the deal I made with him. Um, I'm guessing that's a seat spring mounting to the frame and underneath the seat, um, so that's all right. Piston, um, possibly unused, blasted, says standard on the top, looks to be in good good condition. Uh, another piston, haven't measured them, looks possibly to be unused, it's got rings on it, and looks in really good ink. Brake plate has to be the rear, because there's no front. Um, so we're looking at a rear brake plate or and an extra one. A really old Vegemite jar for the Australians. And we've got roller bearings in there that somebody thought were worthwhile keeping. Um, precision bearing. Three pieces of a bearing with no balls, which is kind of useless. Um... However, I'm guessing somebody, I'm hoping somebody replaced it and put the old one in the box for safekeeping. Um, but there it is. Uh, gudgeon pin, I suppose. Yep. Uh, gu gudgeon pin with the brass ends as opposed to having clips like they do now. Not bad. Head stem off a bicycle. No idea why. Frank. The crank has been apart. Um, bearing. I suppose it's great to have as a spare. Some oil or fuel fittings. Which is cool. Uh, another gear change lever. Possibly not correct or maybe. Hard to tell. Do that in a minute. I'm guessing the interior of a silencer or something that's homemade possibly because the, the drill holes are sharp on the inside. Magneto cap. Hard to say. Valve guides. <clears throat> Wrapped in wire with a string on them. Actually, here's another one. It says new. I'm guessing they're a pair, two pairs, sorry, of new old stock valve guides. Hard to tell. Um, they don't appear to be flogged out or overly worn. Could be handy. Although the ones in here um, are really very, very good. A random piece of metal. No idea. Clip. No idea at this point. Maybe a foot peg fitting. No idea. Couple of big ends. Um, both look to be worn and have stuff on them. Part of a throttle. A timing gear. Cam follower. Some more gudgeon pins. Fork fittings by the look of them. And then maybe some front end fittings. Some random stuff left in the bottom of the tub. And you can have a look at. If you see something, then you know what it is and it's important. Yell at me really loudly. Uh, in the bag is brake drum bolts, which is handy. So that's that tub. Let's get that packed up and I'll find another one for you. Well, I've pulled a few together here and we'll see if we can get through them quickly. What's in the lunch baggie? Well, it's chain. I'm hoping, oh, it's really quite good chain. 
um, what appears to be anyway. I'm suspecting it's the chain off the bike, um, but it's well lubricated. It's very, very clean. And I sort of wonder whether it's new. Um, the person who had the bike originally, I'd say, wasn't that far away from getting a result. And I'm not really sure why they gave up, but they did. It says rally oil pump in here. I'm a bit scared. So, let me get this out bit by bit. Looks homemade, so I'm not really sure. Threaded piece, another piece, and then an assortment. Now, I couldn't actually say that all these pieces come from the one pump, or whether they are multiple efforts to get a pump to be, or even what they are. So there's a weird clip, a very beaten up clip. The three pieces I showed you to begin with. And then, there's these metal parts that appear to be made of cast. And they are sprockets. And then, pieces that appear to go between them to join them together because this little piece will fit inside there and then you'd attach another one to the top of it, I assume. How does it work? I have no idea. And then I've got a lot of small bolts and springs that are very obviously very specific. Somebody has separated them up to get them to be part of the oil pump. How does it work? I don't really know. This was on the engine when I got it and is an adapter, I'd say, to drive on a Pilgrim pump off the front of the timing chain case. I assume this little piece goes into it and is part of the drive unit or something. I don't, I don't really know how it works, but that's part of the fun is finding out. So there's the oil pump stuff. How does it work? No idea. Anybody had an exploded diagram of a mid twenties rally oil pump, it'd be super than that. On to the next tub. Light interruption, another plastic container. So somebody's gone to some trouble of having, um, I assume oil or fuel maybe, fittings nickel coated. Uh, this one's beaten up and got the end broken off. Uh, brake shoe. Druid, Druid fork. Uh, link arm, uh, brake arm. I'm gonna dump this. Fantastic. First thing I notice, copper fittings, plumbing fittings, and homemade fittings. Weird, not sure why, but everybody has them. Some quite purpose-built old cast fittings. Don't know what from or why, but they're Y pieces or joiners. They're pretty cool. There's a heap of bushings that jump out at me, that were engine bushings, uh, which is always good to have. You can always remeasure them and make an estimation of what you had. So they're in a bronze and there's one there in steel. They're cool. Mm, some sort of adjuster. Can't read what that says. Oh, they're both Druid, so Druid fork arms. They're pretty cool. Uh, another one with mm, web, ah, it's web. Web written on it. Decorative alloy piece, 
threaded perhaps at the back. Not sure, looks important. Pieces wired together always intrigue me. Um, looks like, looks like I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know what it's from, but somebody's gone to the trouble of wiring it together. And I can't read what it says on the back. They always interest me um, because somebody's gone to some trouble. I've got some um, engine plugs, two of those, three of those, handy, more random pieces that I'm not really sure what they go to, or even if they are rally, you just take what you get, that's been silver soldered to something, a fuel tap, um, very worn and very loose, maybe a bearing, Oh, I saw this piece before, and it intrigued me. I wasn't sure what it was, and but it's been a, an important piece of something, and it kind of looks like magneto points. It reminds me of that, because it's sprung, but I don't know what it is. So put it aside, and I'll think about it. It's all good. Um... Wheel adjusters, rear wheel adjusters, clevis, 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 funny little cable holder, clevis, bearing, bolts, weird clevis, that's solid, not, goes around the corner, don't know why, more rear wheel adjusters, and a few more bits and pieces, doesn't look like anything super, and that one, Box of springs, uh, engine maybe, springs, bolts, and assorted. Don't know where any of it goes. Some of them look like brake parts and some of them look like engine parts to me. But we'll see in due course. I don't throw anything away, especially that you get with the project, but you're never really sure what you get. Uh, a bulb horn was in the, with everything else, but no bulb. Uh, well, it's, it works. Don't know whether I want that. Um, a broken timing chain cover with the oil pump drive on it. Um, weirdly enough, they're actually handy. Off my BSA, I cut one and got a good half and a good half and had them welded together. Weirdly, that's a keeper for me. Oil pump that has been cut in half, that appears to have no use whatsoever. Then there's these parts. I'll admit I've looked at these parts before. Now, I'm going to say this one's got casting wax on it. And somebody has plugged up the holes and drawn arrows on it and done all sorts of things to recast one. And I think they recast this one. I think this has been cast to be drilled and tapped and put on like there. But I don't know that for a fact I, I don't really know why or maybe it goes there yeah sorry put that around the wrong way and they're going to use a different oil pump drive i'd love to know what that, what that's about i'm guessing that 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 would go there Let's get that out that's a pain in the butt that that would go there and you'd have a different oil pump drive but you'd actually have to pump engine oil back into the engine via a different way. Because the oil's actually fed in through that thing. In through there. And in theory, you'd be blocking that off with that. So somebody's gone to a lot of trouble um, to have that recast. And that's what looks like 
is what happened. So I don't really know about bows and I don't really know about the timing chain. Oh, sorry, I know about the timing chain, but I don't know about the oil pump drive and I'm not really sure what I'll do. But anyway, it'll all be okay. We'll get there eventually. A uh, little bit more copper line. Dirty great big springer front end spring. Uh, looks like a bearing cup. And weirdly, it looks like a piece of a frame that's been cut off. Also have another jar with roller bearings in it that has 1928 written on it. I don't know about that or what it is, so I'll throw all that back in the box and we'll push on from there. Next box. Had to move you a bit further away for this one. Silencer, exhaust. Perhaps it's homemade. Perhaps it's a reproduction. Perhaps it's just been repaired or I don't really know what. It's a bit rough in places. But it does resemble the exhaust as it you see it in photos. But it is a bit daggy in places. Um, the welds are a bit rough. And it doesn't really look like an original pipe to me. I could be wrong. But there it is. I've got it anyway. Um, a jar of assorted screws and nuts and bolts and... Just stuff. What is any of it? Well, it's probably all cycle thread or British Standard Fine or whatever. It's handy as. And somebody thought to keep it, so so am I. One last box and it's a big one. All right, last box. I'm going to pop this on the floor and get the pieces out for you one at a time. Right, spare pair of engine cases. Now they look okay. Is there anything wrong with them? That doesn't appear to be. They've got a number on them. Mm, 13178, maybe it says R something. Not sure, they're a little bit beaten in places. They might have had a repair just there. Yeah, repaired I'd say repaired oh, yeah repaired I think look spare engine cases can't hurt spare bottom end um, well engine case and conrod big end and everything else in there piston and engine frame brackets so, look, a handy thing to have. It has the followers in it. It has everything else that's in it, the cams. So that's a handy thing. It doesn't feel flogged out or anything in the valve guides. So, you know, is it a good thing? Yeah, probably. Probably. Handy thing to have. And you can sort of see how everything went together or how you think everything goes together and hope that you're right. Now, just a steering coal. It's pretty worn. A couple of holes in it, not quite right. Spring from a spring of front end. Um, again, not sure. And a pretty rough barrel. Pretty rough barrel. Um, it's got valves in it. It's got springs in it. It's got spiders in it. Cobwebs. But it comes with the rest of it. So... You know, you've got to be optimistic and think, yeah, look, that works for me. So you got it. You got it as part of it. You paid for it. <laughs> you probably paid overs for it. Got a free stone. It's in, as I say, it's in pretty poor condition. But, well, it's actually the next day um, from the previous footage you've just seen. And I found another container that I forgot the video. So into it. Um, 34, a couple of 30, a 34 and a 36 inch sprocket 
Um, I'm not actually sure what they go on. Um, they are rally. I think they're clutch side, but I'm not sure. And then a heap of clutch discs. So one, two, three, four. Some more corked ones. Five, six. And then these ones have got a pin in them that looks like they're meant to pin into something. Now, I don't know whether they pin together or what they do just yet. I haven't quite worked out that out. But this one's got a hole and this one's got a pin. And the others haven't. So I'm sure that'll come to light as I get further into the clutch. Those pieces come to then there's a heap of bearing cups. Um, I assume they're headset, but I could be wrong. Um, they they don't appear to be threaded inside, um, but they look like they'd be headset to me. So they're all nicely wired together. A Conrod, it says spare, and it also says new. But it does have a question mark, so could be new old stock or not. Another Conrod does have a part number on it. Is it new? Oh, you wouldn't think so. But anyway. Aluminium Magneto platform. I uh, hope it's the right one because that's really nice. Some vintage jars with something in them. Um, a rubberized kind of material or, or a brake block or clutch material in um, a trapezoidal, I think, shape. And there's probably 20 in the jar. Don't really know what that's about. Haven't seen anywhere they'd go yet. Another jar with some small bearings and grease nipples. Broken part of a gearbox. Maybe it's handy, maybe it's not. It's all wired together and you got it. I'm gonna move that tripod and bring it a bit closer. Right, let's try that angle. Perhaps it's an axle. Kickstart apart from the gearbox. A gearbox front. Now it's had some repairs, not too bad. Could be cleaned up a lot better, but that's what it is. Uh, doesn't look to be broken anywhere else, but it's had the corner off it. Good Lord. A lot of gearbox parts in here. Then we go for axles or front end shafts. Another Kickstarter spring, maybe. Well, sorry, it's a Kickstarter spring. Is it correct? Hard to say. An actuation arm. Gearbox. Gearbox. More shafts with threaded ends. Very unusual bracket that's nickel plated that you would think is quite specific. Um, it's riveted together, so that's unusual. Another arm for brakes, decompression, or something like that. A sprocket, I assume um, engine, or clutch. Clutch, sorry, what am I saying? I think it's clutch. Small bracket, a 
clutch part. There's the hole. There's that hole. Maybe. I assume so. Amazing what you see when you come to it. Another sprocket. Uh, a clutch centre. Now. Maybe rear wheels. No, not rear wheel sprockets, but sprockets that are threaded as opposed to not threaded. They're 21, 21. They're for different types of chain. They all appear to be 21 tooth. Nice blank engine plugs for the tops. They'd be better on it than what are on it. That's cool. Another magneto sprocket, even cooler. Another version of a kickstart spring. Don't know. Um, a bearing cover. Perhaps rear wheel. A timing chain with connector gear that looks to be new and is in a Reynolds um, chain specialist bag, so perhaps it's new. Um, a rear chain, but certainly not new and a bit manky. Now we're getting to the bottom. I'd say another, another version of the Kickstarter spring. I think that makes four. A worm drive for something. Hmm. I have no idea. And these look as though they're homemade. Don't know what they are or what they're for. But they were in the box too. And then cylinder gaskets. They're copper. I assume they go there. And, you know, you seal up the top of the engine with them. Um, they look to be in good nick. And probably if they were annealed, they could be used. There you go. I think you've seen it all now. That's the end of it. Hey, that's the project. Um, there's a lot to do. It's a bit exciting and a bit daunting. And you always come home from these shopping trips thinking, Ooh, I hope I did the right thing. But I'm pretty happy. It's a cool project. There's a lot of it there. Somebody has spent a lot of time accumulating this stuff over a lot of years and putting a lot of effort into getting as much of this together as there was. So I like a project uh, and I like a basket case to a point, but it's pretty good. I'm pretty happy. There's some odd things for me to sort out. What did I pay for it? Well, I don't know what I'm going to say. I paid well for it because it's come through two dealers' hands. Uh, from the first bloke who sold it, he might be disappointed now. But he got his cash and he walked away. And the second bloke the same. And the bloke that sold it to me, he's got the same. I'm going to try and get it to run because that's what I like to do. It isn't like American Pickers where you go and you beat the bejesus out of some poor bastard who doesn't know what he's got or needs money or wants out of something. It just doesn't work that way. If you see a project you want, buy it. Make sure you're paying about the right money for it and that it's what you want. Then stump up and pay for the damn thing and move on. This is a good little project. I'm enthusiastic. I hope you can enjoy the ride with me. Like, comment, subscribe. Hey, and share this stuff with other people if you want. Be good to see the subscribers grow. Cheers. Have a good one. Well, there you go. That's Slap Dank Journey for another week. That's the unpack of the rally done. That's all the parts I've got. Didn't get anything else with the bike. You've seen it all. Some of it's good. Some of it's not. Anyway, it'll all be work itself out in the long run. Thanks to the people who reached out to me during the week, giving me advice on what parts were. I really appreciate it. 
like, comment, subscribe. Most of all, enjoy your life. Have a good one.